I hired in at Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in Gadsden, Alabama, February the 5th, 1979. Lily Ledbetter. She worked for Goodyear Tire and Rubber in Gadsden, Alabama for almost 20 years. Toward the end of that time, she got an anonymous tip on a slip of paper. Turned out she was being paid less than men doing the same work. A lot less. I was shocked because there was so much difference in their pay versus mine. By the end of 1997, Ledbetter was being paid $44,700 a year, while her male counterparts were making 25% more. She sued. I thought and believed that if I had a problem, that I could carry it to a court system, whether it be local or federal or to the Supreme Court. In 1965, Congress prohibited discrimination in employment, not just on the basis of race, but also on the basis of sex. Applying this law, a jury of Lily Ledbetter's peers awarded her compensation for the pay discrimination she'd suffered while working for Goodyear. The jury had understood what we were telling them. They saw the proof, and there was no doubt. Who could disagree? The Goodyear Company. It appealed the decision, arguing that the law said that such cases must be brought within 180 days. They said that 180 days started when Ledbetter received her first discriminatory paycheck, even though she didn't find out about the discrimination until 16 years later. So Lily Ledbetter wound up before the Supreme Court. And there she ran into a problem. President Bush had recently appointed two very conservative justices, John Roberts and Samuel Alito. And despite the lower court rulings and the Supreme Court's own precedents, they ruled against Lily Ledbetter. A major legal setback for workers in this country, the Supreme Court limiting employees' ability to file a lawsuit against the US pay Supreme discrimination. Court, that in a narrow five to four employees. split, sided with Goodyear and handed big business a major win. But Justice Ruth, Justice Bader, Ruth Ginsburg Bader Ginsburg took exception to the majority's decision. She quoted the Supreme Court's own precedent, which said that each discriminatory paycheck is illegal, not just the first one. Besides, she said the decision was unrealistic. Goodyear prohibited all its employees, including Ledbetter, from discussing their pay. She'd had no way of learning the truth until long after the discrimination had begun. Ginsburg concluded, this court does not comprehend or it is indifferent to the insidious way in which women can be victims of pay discrimination. She was exactly right, and I knew that she knew where I had been and how hard it is, and I felt like that she had been mistreated through the years as well. But both Alito and Roberts were well coached for their confirmation yeah. hearings. I do. They pledged to be open-minded, fair, and to respect precedent. I need to decide those questions with an open mind on the basis of the arguments presented, on the basis of the record presented in the case, and on the basis of the rule of law, including the precedence of the court. And the presumption is that the court will follow its prior precedents. There needs to be a, a special justification for overruling a prior precedent. Is gender discrimination, as you've written in a memo, a perceived problem or is it a real problem? Of course gender discrimination is a serious problem. It's a particular concern uh, of mine. Those justices had no idea what it was like in the real world, working in a factory, trying to scrounge out a living and to be a female at that. John Roberts is the youngest Chief Justice in 200 years. Samuel Alito is just a few years older. They could be making decisions for decades to come. But that must not stop us from doing whatever we can to protect liberty and to seek justice. Unfortunately, most people don't realize that what the Supreme Court decides affects their lives on a daily basis. For women, whether or not there'll be access to safe legal abortion depends on who the justice of the court are. For the millions of people who are victims of discrimination, well, whether there's going to be a remedy depends on who the court is. For people who have a loved one who's a defendant in the criminal justice system, whether there's really going to be a fair system under the Constitution depends on who the justs are. And I think we need to do a much better job before the 2008 election of showing people that one of the most important, maybe the most important thing the next president is going to do is determine whether we'll have justices and judges who will enforce the Constitution. This is not just about politics or some abstract issue of the law. This is about justice. 
This is about human beings, like Lily Ledbetter, a woman who has worked hard and honestly all her life. Not famous people, but Americans, entitled to justice. Fairness. Fairness. 